Hey everybody, welcome to this section where we're going to start creating the front end to match with our back end API endpoints. So we're going to start with deleting customers from our page. So we're just going to create a delete button on an individual customer's page. And when you click that, it'll redirect back to the list of customers and it will no longer contain that customer we just deleted. And all this is going to happen on the back end too. So this isn't just some front end magic with mock data the data will actually be deleted from the database before it navigates back to the original page. In the upcoming videos, we're also going to worry about updating data and adding new data, but we're just going to take it one step at a time, and I think delete's going to be the easiest transition into the more complex stuff like updating and adding new. Taking a look at what we have so far, we can imagine we're some tech company and we have a bunch of customers such as these ones here. We want to be able to go in and delete a specific customer by hitting a button that says delete. And I just wanted to take a quick aside as the list here that is defined here is incorrect. And you'll see in the console we'll get a problem. Each child on the list should have a unique key prop. So there's two problems here. One, I put the, the unordered list inside of the return for the map, which is a big noob mistake. So we want to actually put that outside and that's because we only want one unordered list. Each element inside is just a list item. And that's what's going to have a key prop. What's the key going to be? Well, each customer has a unique ID, so that should fix the problem. And now when we do a refresh, for one, these don't look nearly as spaced out and we don't get a problem in the console. And we will create a button here. This button will say delete. And we're going to have an on click handler and I'm going to define a function in here. Now, so far we have only done these arrow functions. Just as an example, I want to actually put a function name here. So we will say delete customer. You're just going to put the name, you're not going to use parentheses, and you will define that up here. So I'll just put it after the use effect. We'll say function delete customer. And in here, I'm just going to console log deleting. All right, so that looks good. And then I will just create a uh, line break here because I think these will be on the same line. All right, so this is what we have. We deleted this customer, so we'll go to one that exists. There's this button delete. It doesn't really look like a button, but again, remember we're gonna do our styling later. When we click the button, it shows deleting in the console. I like to have the function defined in the location that it's going to be used. Another reason why you might want to use a name versus an inline function is if you have to invoke the same function for multiple buttons. Right now we're defining it just for this button, but let's say you had two buttons that did the same thing. Well then to not repeat code, you could just refer to a different function outside of the, uh, the event handler. Now what we need to do is we need to say fetch. And the fetch is going to look pretty similar, but it's going to be a few differences. The first, we're only going to need one dot then, and I'll explain why here in a minute. So here we're going to put the URL. So let's define that up above const URL. It's going to come from the base URL plus slash customers. So, um, forgot the API, sorry. API slash customers slash and then plus the ID. We definitely need to have the ID because we need to know which item we are deleting. This URL is going to be passed into fetch here, but that's not the only thing. We're going to have to pass in another object with the method, and this is important. We want this to say delete. That is how we define what method we are using with fetch. Inside of the then, we're going to have our function call. So this will have the response. And inside of here, we are going to check if the response is okay, but we're going to invert it. So if it's not okay, then what we're going to do is we are going to throw a new error with the message, something went wrong. And for that, we're going to need a catch. So catch is going to show up down here. And all we're going to do right now is just console log the error pretty simple. So the other thing we would normally do is after the if we would say return response dot JSON and then we would have a dot then with the arrow function 
and inside of here we would have data. But if you remember, the way we defined our backend code is that on a delete, we are returning no content. So there's not going to be a JSON body in the network request. So this isn't really going to work. We don't need that anymore. And as a result, we're not going to need to return response.json. Instead, we're just going to assume things went well as response.ok assumes a status code in the 200s. So if we get to this point, we should have successfully deleted the content. So what we will do is we will navigate and pass in slash customers. So as a reminder, this navigate is a hook right here. Use navigate and that allows us to force a redirect back to the main list. And we can get rid of that comment. That should do the trick, but let's just try it out. We have a bunch of items in the list, so if we need to try a couple more times, we should be good. So let's just go into any of these, such as meta, and we will delete. And it's gone. IBM, we will delete. Twitter, we will delete. So that's how you make a delete button. Now one other thing to note that is optional but is usually recommended is having a content type with the request. So if we take a look at our network and we go to one of these deletions, the headers here for the request, we want to add in here that we are making a JSON request. Obviously our application still works without that, but this is a good practice for general API consumption. So what we do is we add another object in here and this has the key headers. And inside of here, we will define the first header, which is content type. And we're going to need to surround this in quotes. There we go. And the value should be application slash JSON. Save. Let's try this out. Let's go into one of these and let's make sure we're watching the network down here. We hit delete. We get a new delete here. Scrolling down to the request headers, we have content type application JSON. So that is how you define the content type in your fetch requests. Another thing you can do is include a body, which we will be talking about in the upcoming episodes. Thank you so much for watching. At this point, you now know how to delete data. Stay tuned for the upcoming episodes for the other request methods. See you then.